Welcome to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. For the next hour, you'll hear proven methods for how to live the multiple income streams dream. Ryan is passionate about helping others discover their gifts and start their own business. He's published five books, and his courses and group coaching programs have changed the lives of thousands of students all over the world. Ryan's books include Private Label, The Easy Way, Finding Your Grace Place, and his latest, Streams of Income. And now, here's your host, Ryan Rieger. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger. Today, we're chatting with Lindsay Lutz. She's a wedding photographer, but she has managed to turn that passion and skill into multiple streams of income, and she's growing those streams of income. And she and her husband has paid off $174,000 in debt through their business. And so we talk about that. We dig into the streams of income that she is creating. If you are in a position or you have a job, a career, uh, or a business where in order to scale it, you have to work more hours, book more clients, listen to this episode. It'll be very encouraging. So here is my interview with Lindsay. All right. Lindsay, welcome to Streams of Income Radio. Thank you so much for doing this with me. You're so welcome. So tell me, who is Lindsay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's a big question. Your story, um, how you got started, what you do, and all that. Yeah, so my husband and I have been married almost five years. We'll be five years in November. Awesome. And um, about a year and a half into our marriage, we were both working different hours. He uh -huh. worked a normal nine to five. Um, he was pretty unhappy at his job. I was working for a ministry, so I was working later in the evenings uh -huh. um, and not a lot during the day. And mm. we were just passing each other. And we first met in film school at Texas Christian University, and we okay. um, just have always connected over creative things. Mm -hmm. And so we had this kind of crazy idea to start a, a photography and video company just to get some side income to help yeah. supplement some income for us. Yeah. And then to do things together. Yeah. And we never expect that was in 2017. And yeah. Um, we never expected it to blossom into what it's been. And, um, and about a year after we started our business, we dropped a video from what we offered and we just slowly became a photography company where we were serving weddings and couples and families, um, some seniors, things like that. But okay. um, yeah, so we've been our business. Senior citizens or seniors in high school? <laughs> Seniors in high school. Okay. Seniors in high school. I mean, sure, we've done some birthday parties, some some sixty year old birthday parties. Those are fun. Um, lots of talkative ladies. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've been about three and a half years into our business, and just it's blossomed into something we never expected. But that is awesome. So we were chatting. Um, the reason you're on this podcast, there's several reasons. One is you have an awesome story of some pain off some debt, which we'll get to. But you sent me a message on Instagram back, this is July 22nd, so it's not too long ago. You said, hey, Ryan, I listen to your podcast pretty much weekly, and I love your content. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're, you're the one that listens. Um, <laughs> I listened to the online course podcast today, because that was where we were talking about how to create a course the easy way, do it quickly. Um, and you say you felt really inspired. I've actually had lots of thoughts and ideas and always love listening to people winning at creating multiple streams of income. As I am listening, though, I'm having a hard time relating it to my business, photography for weddings mostly. I've been branching into family similar to Katie Beth Lamb. So Katie was on episode eight, guys. Listen to that episode. It was awesome. It was fun uh, hearing how Katie takes what she does uh, which is photo photo photography and turns that into multiple income streams. And we'll dig into that with Lindsay too. But I'd love if you'd share more on your podcast, how to create multiple streams with businesses that are mostly service oriented instead of product based. So I thought, Hey, this is cool. I saw that you were um, local. So Hey, let's just jump on a call. So we got on a call, chatted and you dug into what you're doing and everything. I was just super impressed. And um, then you told me about how much debt you paid off. So we'll talk about that. But tell me what your business looks like um, right now. Yeah. So we are 
Mostly mar our marketing is, which most of our marketing is free. We use okay. Instagram. We use a web, we have a website. We use Facebook. Uh, we haven't done any paid marketing um, because we want our business to be built off word of mouth. But That's most of awesome. our business is geared towards weddings and couples. Okay. Um, and then, of course, as we've grown in our business and the longer our business has been established, that also becomes families because our couples return, mm. they have babies or, yeah. you know, something like that. And we get to capture those moments too, because we built the trust. Yes. You know, we built the trust on their wedding day and then they come back and they want maternity photos and we Love built that trust. And then they have the baby and we have newborn photos and then we have family photos. So we've had a handful of couples we've seen through those major mm -hmm. family changes. And that's been really awesome. Um, yeah. but yes, we're mostly wedding photographers. Um, my husband and I shoot everything together wow. and he's a photographer too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's it's cool. A, it's a, it's a family business. <laughs> that's cool. We call that, it that allows you just thinking side, <laughs> side note here. Um, that's how when I remember when Melaine and I got married back in 2009, it was in New York city. Um, we did a destination wedding and, uh, total didn't plan on going this direction, but it made me think of that, that w our wedding day, because the couple that we hired to do the wedding photographer, they were married and they both did it. Like, um, before the wedding, uh, the, the lady went up to where Melaine was getting ready, took photos of her. The guy did the same thing in my room and took us separately. And it was really cool because, you know, one person, you, you can't do all of that. Right. Uh, so that's really cool. Yeah. And we just like, we, we started the business because we wanted to spend time together. And I, uh -huh. it's not, I have the passion for the photography piece of it. Uh -huh. And, and Brandon comes with me and he's really talented. Um, but I told him, I'm not going to do this if we can't do it together because I'm not mm -hmm. going to do a business where I'm, it's causing me to be separated right. from you. I want to do a business where we have built in time together. So we mm -hmm. spend, Saturdays, eight to 10 hours a day working together. And as you work a husband wife team, there's some boundaries and some balances you have to find. Who's, who's the boss? Me. It's me. <laughs> but I do, I try to be very respectful to him because you wear the wife hat, right. wear the boss hat, wear the mom hat. And it's right. really hard to wear multiple hats at the same time. Right. And I've learned there's a learning curve when you first start. <laughs> And he felt, and he had his feelings hurt a couple times for good reason. And so <laughs> we're, we're definitely learning and we've gotten a lot better and mm. it's all about respect. It's mutual yeah. respect. So that's awesome. We didn't plan on talking about that. We could, that's a whole other podcast <laughs> episode of how to it work is. with your husband that's and work it. with your it wife yeah. in our business. Lindsay, we have people that uh, sell on Amazon and a lot of them make, make it a family business and the, you know, which one of them ends up being the boss and uh, it can create weird dynamic, weird dynamics because you're in your home yeah. doing this business. And so it's like, hey, wait, you know, I'm not used to this because usually it's me telling you what to do. And, and, and now you're telling me and it just doesn't work. And where does work and where does work in some of the time, you know, when you're in business, work never really ends. It's like you're yeah. always thinking about it and always uh, for us idea people, we're always doing it. But that's cool. How did you get started in photography? Other than like, who, who do you, who else do you follow? I know Katie's one of them, obviously, right? Yeah, Katie Lamb is one of my favorites because she's just taken her business and pushed it beyond a lot of just um, photographers that just take pictures. And there's nothing wrong with having a business that's solely focused on taking pictures. Um, the people that we learned our skill from um, and just the way that we wanted to settle our business foundations um, is Amy, Amy and Jordan Demos, which are pretty big names in the photography world, but we've taken all three of their courses and they're just very kind people. We like their business model and their business model is just to love and serve. Like it's a very broad business model, but we've yeah. modeled our business that way and it's worked for us. So <laughs> that's awesome. But we really like them. They're awesome. I love it. And you mentioned Katie and, uh, uh, and so that she is definitely a model of somebody who has, and so guys, even if you're not a photographer, you're listening to this and you're like, I have a business where in order to make more money, I have to work more hours. I have to book more clients. 
this episode and episode eight where I talk with Katie, listen up because this is, this is the model in my opinion. There's other ways to do it, but um, Katie and Lindsay are perfect examples of people who have done it and are in the process of creating multiple streams of income from something that typically you think, oh man, I got to spend more time away from my family, more time away from my husband, more time away from my wife in order to build this business and increase it from where it's at now. But no, it doesn't have to be that way. So let's talk about our conversation we had just a few weeks ago, some of those ideas and some of the things you're doing to branch off from like with a wedding business, if typically you would have to be like, okay, so I'm just going to book on Saturdays and Sundays now. Oh, wait, hopefully I can pick up some weddings on Monday. because people. I mean, don't... that's happening right now. Is that really? Okay. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday weddings are really? coming a more normal thing at the moment. Okay. Ours yeah. was actually on Monday because we could, uh, we were able to get them. They were available on a Monday because it's not the normal day for a wedding and they were a lot cheaper on Monday than they were on Saturday. So yeah. Um, Elaine got a good deal for that, but, uh, okay. So talk about how somebody in your position is able to create multiple streams of income is cause it's not like, okay, you know what? You're going to go and go work at McDonald's in the, in your free time. That could be an extra stream of income, but we're talking about something that is complementary to mm -hmm. what you're already doing. Yeah. So let's dig into that. And some of the other, some of the things you're doing, the other ideas that may, that you're, you're thinking about. Yeah. So when we chatted, you told me, you know, service-based businesses sometimes can have a cap because you only have so much time to fill. You only have seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And I'm a mom, so I really have just a very limited amount of time to serve couples, to serve mm -hmm. families, you know, maybe three days a week or three nights a week mm -hmm. beyond what weddings we've already booked. And mm -hmm. um, that can be really limiting you can raise your prices mm -hmm. and that can help bring in more income. But sure. at a certain point, there's a cap for how much you can charge beyond right. what the market is in your area. Yep. So, so one of the things is I took Katie Lamb's course on um, her diversifying your income, which is all about working with affiliate marketing and affiliate links and things like that. And there's some legal things and she goes into that and it's a great course. It's mm -hmm. affordable. And so it's a, it's, I think it's maybe an hour long, maybe an hour and a half long. Um, and I just like soaked it all up. Um, and I started doing those affiliate marketing links, not as much, um, working with brands, more just affiliate marketing because it was easy. It was fast. It was free. We didn't have to pay for anything except for the course itself. Okay, so um, pretend and I that I don't know, have any clue what you're talking about. What is yeah, affiliate so, marketing? Yeah, there, there's a few legal things, which I'll, if you want to learn about that, take her course. Mm -hmm. But basically, you um, sign up for an affiliate, I'd say like a middleman almost, and they help find these stores or online sites, or it could be even Amazon, and mm -hmm. you can put links on your website, on your blog, um, maybe you build a page on your website that's just for affiliate links, mm -hmm. and then you direct others to those links. Um, the reason I, I thought that that would be a good fit for me is because I had families, I had moms, and I had brides constantly asking me, where did that person get that outfit? Or, you know, mm -hmm. where did, where did our daughter's name's Ellie? Where did Ellie, you know, where did you get those shoes for Ellie? Or, um, how do I make my photos look like that? What do I wear for my pictures? Mm -hmm. And I kept sending people these links and I'd say, here's this dress or here's this outfit. And, and what Katie, you know, stands on diversifying your income is like, if you, I think you said this on your podcast one time too, like if people are constantly asking you about something, then you have something that you can give to others and mm -hmm. potentially make something off of right. and not in a sleazy way, but just right. like you're serving them and then you get a little bit back and it doesn't cost them any extra exactly. at all. It comes as long out of the as you're upfront pocket. about it. Yeah. You yep. just say like, this is an affiliate link, you know, shop through this link. We'll get a small, you know, percentage back, but it doesn't cost you any extra. And mm -hmm. so um, we're on a platform called like to know it, which is a host for mostly like homeware and, um, 
like how like home goods and um outfits and shops like that and they're they're approved with lots of big um companies so it, it just it worked for us yeah. so that's really been the first step into creating those multiple streams of income yeah. and it takes almost like no goal. work for you i mean there's a little it's bit of getting work. that link and if people private message you dm you as you say on uh, instagram you can just send that link to them directly exactly. and again yeah. guys it, she's right it does not cost if I buy, if I see something like, hey, what's that shirt that Brandon's wearing? It looks really cool in that out in the in that picture you took. Um, you know, she could send me the link and yeah. I could go buy it and I, she's going to get a cut. It doesn't cost me anything else, but Old Navy or whatever brand it was um, is going to pay her a small percentage. It's a small, it's, and it's a small percentage and it takes a long time to get the momentum. So you just have to stick with it is what we've noticed in the beginning. It was like pennies here, dimes here. Sure. And then, and then as we've grown and as I've continued to share, you get more people asking more questions because they see mm -hmm. that you will send it to them. And so it's right. starting to, to come back and it is becoming a stream of income for us yep. with very little work. Yeah. I love it. You know what, what fascinating when one of the first few, honestly, we talk about Katie on this a lot already, but one of the, she was one of the first few people that my wife followed on um, Instagram. And so when we met her for the first time to get our photos taken, we're like, I, I told her, like, I hear your voice in my house all the time. Cause Melaine's always playing your, your Instagram stories. And what <laughs> fascinated me about what, and then, so then I went and followed her is it was amazing to see that she's a photographer and you have people that will be like, and you're probably getting this now too. So like that, that picture behind you on your wall there, it looks like squares and you, you, you ha you'll have people that'll be like, Hey, what's that picture in the background? where did you get that? And <laughs> it's just so random that mm -hmm. people are asking uh, Katie about like decor in her house and she's a photographer or the, how did you build this thing? how did you build your weight, uh, your, your, uh, your home gym and just random yeah, stuff. And she's a DIY genius she and she's done everything for her and she's passionate about business right. and loves photography, but her like passion is for business. I think my passion's for photography, yeah. but I like being a business owner. Yeah. And that's so good. that's, that's been really cool. And okay, I like so listening to Katie's business advice, you know, She's yeah, great. she's brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you talk about affiliate marketing. What else is are you working on, or have uh, other streams of income that you're able to take your photography passion and turn that into other streams besides just taking pictures? Yeah, so we I think are in kind of a transition, a middle ground. We're trying out some different ideas, and what you've encouraged me is just to, th to try it. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. And just move on. Mm -hmm. Um, because I have a big long list. I think after we got off our call uh -huh. a couple weeks ago, i made a big whiteboard and I put a few awesome. different categories of the people that we kind we serve. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what direction do I want to go for first? Um, so one of the things that I think is in our near future, like in the next I don't know, eight to 12 weeks, I am going to be working through our wedding process, the wedding workflow we do for couples. And what areas do I think could serve other photographers well, especially starting out? So one of the, one of the things that I'm going to try, I really want to create a how we go through and design timelines for a wedding day. Um, and I'd like to do a little bit of a beta test for that and uh, but go through a step-by-step -step process of the questions we ask our couples. Um, what what needs do they have on a wedding day? And then how do we build that custom timeline for them so that the wedding day goes smooth? Mm -hmm. um, and then just like common errors that, you know, we forget or in the beginning of our business that we would forget. Yes. And then, and then how do we serve those clients well with that timeline? Yeah. So, so now you have your, uh, you have clients are taking pictures of those are your client, your, your wed people are getting married, but now also other wedding photographers are now are becoming clients of yours. Yes. And then, and that's just building the respect from other photographers and most of our business we build on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So recently we shared about being debt free, becoming debt free. Yes. And having a lot of people ask us about that and how we did that with our photography business, wow. how we did that with a 
variable income. Um, mm -hmm. And so we want to, we want to share that story. We feel like it will help a lot of people. And, Absolutely. And, and so we would like to, I don't know if we'll monetize that one, but I, I definitely well, think you know how you could honestly now, not just to, but you could take there's, you know, all the different ways you've, um, you, since you listen, listen to my podcast, you know that there's three main ways to make money online. You could actually send uh, folks like that. Not everybody wants to be a wedding photographer. You could honestly send them over here to me and I'll give you an affiliate because yes. um, I mean, or anybody else that you feel like you're that you just really connect with. Or mm -hmm. if you talk to if you're what's so cool about Instagram is you can get you're getting personal. You're talking, you're having one on one conversations. Yeah. So if somebody says, you know what? I want to learn more about affiliate marketing. Well, you send them over to Katie's course and I think she might have an affiliate program. If somebody says, you know what, I'm, I really feel like it's not photography, but you know, really uh, maybe selling physical products online. Well, send them to me and then I'll, I'll give you links. And so there's all these other ways that you can monetize that. You may not want to have a, how to get out of debt course and that's fine. Um, but just send them to other folks that uh, based on their needs. Yeah. I mean, I have all the ideas. I mean, we serve, we serve brides. We also serve moms and yeah. I want to, I want to help moms take better pictures of their kids because I take pictures of Ellie all day long and mm -hmm. I want them to learn how to take better pictures of their kids on their phones mm -hmm. and, their, and their cameras that sit in their closet that they right. got for Christmas. And I'm just an ideas girl. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I am too. Everybody, you're an entrepreneur like me and we always have all kinds of ideas. And as we talked about um, a few weeks ago, I think I told you to, in, to look at all the ideas. Ideas are awesome. But uh, as a friend of mine said, ideas are also very cheap. Um, yeah. They don't, they're not worth anything until you put them into action. And I love that you had the whiteboard. And so what I think I told you, um, if I didn't, is what I should have told you is grab, take all those ideas, put them down there and look at the ones that are going to be the, and try to rank them in order of what are the fastest to get started mm -hmm. and then sort them also by the ones that are going to have the highest potential of whatever income, you know, the income potential most likely. Mm -hmm. And then which ones match up then? So find the ones that have the highest potential and also are fastest to get started. And those mm -hmm. would be the ones are probably the one you don't want to have five different things you're working on um, typically uh, and, and go after those uh, yeah. to start. And that'll help clear through the clutter because we all have awesome ideas. Yeah. Um, and it's it, sometimes getting started the hard part. Yeah. The workflow one is the one I think that is the, is the quickest because we're in the middle of it right now. Mm -hmm. We're do we have, you know, eight weddings in the fall. So we're wow. doing it over and over and over. Are you booked and this weekend? Um, I'm not booked for ourselves, but I still shoot for other photographers and that's nice. a, that's a part of how we got out of debt. So when we get wow. into that, then I'll explain. Let's talk about that. Okay. So is there anything else on this? So we've talked about affiliate marketing, um, your, your timelines and serving other wedding photographers. Is there anything else that's on the horizon for you as far as income streams? I don't know. Just, we'd like to scale, um, and hire, we want to scale our team. We want to hire out so we can, do the things we're good at mm -hmm. and spend that time making money and doing things we're good at and, you know, giving some of those things and, um, outsourcing some of our business. Yes. So we have more time. So that's on the horizon for us yes. too, but we haven't had the capacity to do that until now. Now we've freed up our income yes. and we can do those things. We didn't have free income at the time to be able to hire a team and, and we have, I mean, we want to show our experience that we give to our couples. We think that's going to help scale our business is to mm -hmm. show the luxury experience we offer people. Yeah. Um, cause we put it, we put a lot of detail work into how we serve people, not just on the wedding day, uh -huh. but the whole experience. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start doing some behind the scenes and, and that's Whoa. a lot of Instagram. Like yeah. that, people eat that up. They, they do, love they? it. It's That's why they, it's why people watch Project Runway or like DIY shows because they love seeing the behind the scenes and then the big reveal at the end. Exactly. So that's what we want to give to people on our website, on our Instagram. It's just see all those behind the scenes and 
That is so cool. Okay, so to sum this up, guys, if you're in a position where you have a, a job like this, or you're in a career like this, or you have a business like this, where you, in order to scale, you have to work more hours, then look at affiliate marketing. That's definitely something you can do. It's an easy thing to add on, because if you have people asking you, what kind of camera are you using? Well, here's the link to it. And instead of just sending them over there, send them over there with an affiliate link so you get paid. And the second one is, could you teach what you know? Could you, are there other people that are in that same service-based business or whatever business that are not as far along as you are? And I'm guarantee every single one of you have learned something. Even if you've just started, you've learned something that other people could learn from and you could teach that and that, turn that into an income. So let's talk about your paying off your debt. How much were you, it just blew me away. How much, I know college is expensive now. It wasn't nearly as expensive when I went to school, but you guys were in debt, how much? So when we totaled it all up with just how much we paid total, uh -huh. it was $174,000. <laughs> so you got married and it had $174,000 in debt. No, when no? we got married, we had 140. Okay. <laughs> and then we bought a car. Okay. That was just not smart. So um, <laughs> we bought a car that was okay. brand new. It was a Toyota RAV4, and we loved the car. We were like, this right. is a car. It's going to be a <laughs> um, And that was probably a year into our marriage. Okay. Um, and so... Uh, yeah, we totaled it about, yeah, 174,000 and it was crazy. Wow. That's yes. a lot. Well, private school just costs a lot. I mean, we both went to Texas Christian University in Fort Worth. Yeah, um, I came there. out, I came out actually debt free. I didn't mm -hmm. have any student loans. So um, Brandon's fault. He went to school for five and a half years. You should you know? have just made him pay it off. Like, come on, that's your debt. When we got married, though, we knew that that, like, I knew that I was stepping into that. And I yeah. think maybe God needed us to go through this process to right. learn how to handle money. And, yeah. mm. um, you know, we had a couple of really cool things happen to us. We we gave the car back to Toyota. We showed up at, mm. at Toyota and we said, this is a check for the remaining payments that we owe for our lease because we leased it to buy, we've thought this is the perfect option. We're gonna lease it and then we're gonna buy it when our lease runs out. And then we realized that was just not the right decision for our family. Mm -hmm. So we came to Toyota with the, the remaining check for the lease and we said, here's the check, here's the key. And we, the guys were like, what are you guys doing? Never seen this before. But we, we drove away, instead of with two cars, we drove away with one, with faith that we would find a car that we could afford. Yeah. Um, ended up that we got money back from that because they sold the car for more than they expected. Nice. And we got a, a $3,000 check in the mail, which cool. we used to cash flow our child's birth and all of, awesome. the, all of the fees we had for that. And so... Um, a few days after we turned that Toyota car in, we bought a Kia Sorento uh -huh. off of OfferUp yep. of all places. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like a little clunker and we still have it. And she does us well. She serves us well. You know, That's we get awesome. them today. And we really got lucky, I think, with that one. And um, we, had, we had about 10000 of that forgiven. And then we just didn't ask questions. Just 10,000 of it just disappeared, and we were like, don't ask anybody. <laughs> um, but then the rest of it, you know, we really, we, we are Dave Ramsey people. We did the debt snowball, and we had about 10 separate loan, loans that we paid off. And, wow. and one of those was really big. One of them was like $80,000, and the rest were wow. like 2000 5000 6000 I don't think any of the smaller loans reached above um, $7,000. Yeah. So we just had the goals of, we lived off of Brandon's income. Brandon has a stable income. He has a graphic designer job. And, and we lived off of that. Not a lot. And, and most of our bills actually were the first half of the month. So we lived off his first paycheck. Mm. We paid our loans with his second paycheck. And anything we made profit on our business, 
went on on top of that. And that's how we did it. It was such a variable thing. So some months our payment was all we could make. The max payment was all we could make. Yeah. And then, um, or whatever we owed minimum was all we could do. So 1300 Yeah. Give or take. And then, um, and then other months we would book, you know, four family sessions that month and, mm -hmm. and all of that money would go on. So, so some, so that maybe the biggest payment we ever made was like $12,000 at one time. Whoa. Because we just like, we worked our butts off That's and awesome. every Saturday I was shooting, even if it wasn't a wedding for us, it was a wedding for somebody else or um, another photographer you can second shoot um, or it was six year olds birthdays or it was, you know, a little kid's birthday party or yeah. I just said yes. And every mm. time I was available, I said yes. And that people say the math doesn't work. How'd you guys do that in three years? And I said, it doesn't work because it's an emotional thing. It's a commitment thing. It's mm. not, the numbers aren't going to work because when you try to divide it out, because we just put our heads down. We didn't look left. We didn't look right. We didn't go to a restaurant for three years. We didn't, you know, mm. we had sack lunches every day, sandwiches every day. And we said, mm. it's, it's worth it for us, for our goal, for our family to work like crazy, to ramp our income up and just to pay it off. And now our income is just freed up to That's so cool. all of our dreams that we have and to give more and to love mm. others better through our financial gifts that we can give now. So mm. I don't, yeah, it was just, it's a crazy oh, three years. It was a crazy three years. <laughs> three years, $174,000. Yeah. Wow. I just talked with a guy yesterday for another uh, podcast I was, did a guest host on. And uh, he sells on Amazon. He was a professional chef. Um, and he chefs work crazy hours. And so I asked him, how in the world did you fit in your business with being a chef and he said I just had a he said he got up early spent three or four hours in the morning and we got home he'd spent a couple more hours before we went to bed and he said I just had the mindset of whatever it takes yeah and sometimes you have to do that you just have to be like I'm doing this no matter what and my email this morning that went out um, the title was um, how badly do you want it and sometimes business and I'm sure you've probably had your ups and downs in business or you, you probably had some thing times when you're like, this isn't working. I hate this. I should just yes. go get a regular job. Happens yes. to all of us. Business is not always easy. It's fun working for yourself, but sometimes it feels like a roller coaster ride of emotions and mm -hmm. you're tired. I imagine after doing a wedding and <laughs> after being on your feet all day long, but you just did whatever it took. Yeah. To meet and that goal. For us, it was just, it's not, you have to admit to yourself that you made some mistakes. You have to be willing to humble yourself. Yeah. And then you have to say, I, I, it is worth it for whatever future we have in store for our family, mm. for our child. I never want Ellie to experience what, what Brandon had to experience, what we right. had to experience. Um, but, not, but I want Ellie to know how to handle money. Mm -hmm. And we learned how to handle money through this process. We learned yeah. how to budget. We learned how to set a goal and work towards it. Mm -hmm. we're, we're cautious now with our money and how we choose to spend it. And, um, but we're excited with the opportunities open now for us to mm -hmm. grow our business, to grow our family, to mm -hmm. whatever goal. What, we're going to go on a vacation for the first time in five years. Yay. Like. <laughs> It's going to be great. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. The one tip, I don't know, or if you go on vacation, like go to the beach or something, you could book some beach um, photos and write the whole trip off. Totally. Totally. <laughs> I'm in on that. <laughs> do it. Do it. Because we're actually um, wanting to go on vacation. We're going to go to Florida and Melaine's looking at photographers in the area. So like you could, we have people in our community that do retail arbitrage trips. So they'll drive somewhere and all the way they're sourcing products and sending it into Amazon and then they go somewhere fun. And then on the way back, they do the same thing and they can write the whole thing off on taxes. 
That's crazy. Yeah. 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 We, I mean, we think photography is a great business to be in because people Mm -hmm. want photos and we think like photos are just the bread and butter of a family to, to have memories captured, to create heirlooms for your kids one day. Mm -hmm. Like I can't wait to show Ellie our wedding pictures when she gets old enough to understand what they are. And right. I mean, I just print, I print every photo we take. So that's just, awesome. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Very cool. Well, what advice would you give for somebody who is, you know, gosh, either maybe they're wanting to start a business um, or wanting to pay off. They have some debt that they're sitting on that they would love to pay off. Any advice you'd give them? Well, if you want to start a business, I would say first ask yourself, what are you good at? What do you love? What would you want to spend your time doing? If it took you away from time you could spend with your family, is it going to be worth that? Because you really truly enjoy it and feel like you can give those those nuggets of just what you're good at to others. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're trying, if you're in a place where you feel overwhelmed by your debt, or you're maybe in the middle of paying your debt and you're exhausted, I think it's just knowing why you do it first you have to know why you want to do it and yep. why it's worth it yep. um practically i think having a budget is the only way you can get out of debt yeah um and and setting your budget is at less than what you earn yep you know you have to live on less than what you make to be able yep. to pay your debt off mm-hmm. um and then beyond that you ramp your income up what ways right. can you bring in other streams of income? Like that's yeah. just, that, that's, the, that's the, the reason you, you increase your income, you increase the streams of your income is so you have more to, to do things with. If you're out of debt, you have more to play or you have more to pay, you know? Right. And so I just think our, the way we did it and how it works was we lived on less mm-hmm. than we earned and we made as much as we could. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how it, how it like went away so quickly. Yep. I mean, hard work. But. Yeah, definitely hard work. Oh my gosh. Yes. But you did it. Well, congratulations. Thank really you. appreciate you being on here. You know what? Another episode we could have is um, our conversation a couple weeks ago about how you do Instagram. Yes. Um, because uh, my audience is on Instagram a little bit, but primarily Facebook. And so it was fascinating to hear how you do marketing on Instagram, how you reach out to people, what that looks like if your audience is primarily on Instagram. So maybe we'll do another, definitely I'll have you in my insiders group to talk about that. Maybe we can also turn that into a podcast too, just do two at the same time. So awesome, Lindsay, thank you so much for doing this with me. Appreciate it. Congrats on your success and can't wait to see what you guys do. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) All right. See you. Have a blessed day. You've been listening to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. From right here in the Dallas Metroplex, Ryan teaches several entrepreneurial courses and group coaching programs to students all over the world. Be sure to listen next week at the same time for Streams of Income with Ryan Rieger.